In a prequel video, that's an earlier one, I have argued that uh, Latians Delhi, uh, you know, uh, we've defined them as that, uh, at least for powerful politicians, that insufferable group of uh, uh, erudite English-speaking thinkers and writers who believe in uh, social and cultural liberalism, who believe in human rights, uh, religious and uh, gender equality, small state, constitutional remedies, a freer enterprise, and of course, uh, a dollop of uh, efficient welfareism. Now, we've said that this group has the power to make and unmake Prime Ministers, including Modi, who uh, seems to harbour an implacable hostility, uh, calling them an elite, a microscopic minority, you know, um, armchair intellectuals who can uh, safely be ignored. But nothing, nothing could be further from or more lethal than uh, the truth. Yes, of course, uh, uh, Latians Delhi uh, thinks and writes in English because that is the natural Indian language in which they got educated. It's a legacy of 250 years of uh, British rule, not a willing or conscious choice. But this uh, uh, definitely does not make them aliens. They are as Indian and patriotic as any Hindi or Kannada or Bengali or Tamil writer or any other thinker in any other Indian language. In fact, these uh, Latians Delhi writers are among the sharpest minds in India. Their arguments and criticism is nuanced, intelligent, and it's actually pregnant uh, with actionable insights. Any politician who uh, heeds to them can actually strengthen his power. After all, uh, doesn't. Or perhaps uh, shouldn't a sensible leader always keep his most trenchant critics closest to him? Now I shall uh, quote from history to prove my hypothesis. Uh, I have chosen the two turbulent decades from uh, 1969 through to 1989 when uh, India transitioned from a domineering one-party rule to a vibrant multi-party democracy riddled with competing social coalitions and speaking in several uh, regional dialects. Um, let's begin with the rise of Indira Gandhi and the split in the Indian National Congress uh, in 1969. Now, it's, you know, it's quite difficult for millennials to believe, but Indira Gandhi started out as an anti-establishment crusader. She dismantled the right-leaning conservatives in her party, uh, plumping for hard socialism by nationalizing banks, by uh, abolishing princely privileges and packing the Supreme Court with left liberals. Uh, when she vanquished uh, Pakistan to liberate Bangladesh in 1971, she hit her peak popularity. With all modesty, we can say that we have done this action well. Uh, she became the darling of Latians Delhi. Uh, just look at these editorials written by uh, Girilal Jain, who was an early admirer of Mrs. Gandhi and perhaps the most influential Latians voice of that time. It is equally absurd for anyone to suggest that Mrs. Gandhi is paving the way for communism or subordinating the country's foreign policy to that of the Soviet Union. She is not only proclaiming the essential unity of the subcontinent, but also taking steps to create, as far as it is within her power, conditions which can effectively bar external interventions. A competition in sham radicalism can prove disastrous for the country. The situation need not have taken this ugly turn. There is no question that the presidential order of 16th November falls in the category of black laws. As is uh, scathingly evident from the above editorials, the phraseology moving from sham radicalism to black laws. Uh, Indira Gandhi's political graph fell almost in perfect sync with the rising criticism uh, from Latians Delhi. Uh, she was eventually trounced by the hastily uh, created Janata Party in 1977, who then became the new darlings. My personal high point was an election rally I attended at Ram Leela Medan. It was an opposition show and the star speaker was the Jan Sangh's Atal Bihari Vajpayee, whose slow drawl, pauses and wit had the crowds in raptures. I returned home wanting Vajpayee to become the next Prime Minister. But soon the Janata Party became a prisoner of internal intrigue and was duly slammed by Latyan's Delhi. Here is Kuldeep Nair, once imprisoned in the emergency and a natural supporter of the Janata government, now turned virulent critic. Instead of Sanjay Gandhi, the government now had to contend with Kanti Desai, Muraji's son, who was equally ruthless and wanting in integrity. Muraji rang me to warn that my writings were actionable 
and that he could put me behind bars. Another Latyan's uh, stalwart, uh, B.G. Verghese, had uh, this to add on the 15th of May, 1979. The psychology of change is absent. Instead, there's a sense of political indecision pulling apart in slow motion. Now to the rise and fall of uh, Rajiv Gandhi and uh, V.P. Singh. That's from 1985 to uh, 1990. Uh, unsurprisingly, uh, the Janta experiment failed and Mrs. Gandhi returned to power in 1980. But before she could be felled by critics, she was tragically assassinated by her bodyguards in 1984. Her son, Rajiv Gandhi, scripted the biggest mandate in India's history and took charge uh, under a rapturous welcome uh, from Latyan's Delhi. Rajiv's victory sent the commentariat into a swoon. Ramnath Goenka, the proprietor of the Indian Express and lifelong opponent of the Nehru Gandhi's memorably commented that he could die in peace, knowing India was in Rajiv's safe hands. Because of his age, he would be the instrument of much-needed change. His penchant for high-tech and determination to propel India into the 21st century were applauded by the people, especially the youth. Once again and inevitably, Latyan's Delhi turned on Rajiv Gandhi and he was defeated by his confidant turned adversary VP Singh in 1989. Now this Thakur from Uttar Pradesh was the new Latyan's icon. VP Singh was the nearest to a hero I ever had because of his integrity and incorruptibility. Singh's swearing in was like a celebration for most journalists in Delhi. The Singh government ran into a storm of protests over the Mandal Commission recommendations. I supported VP Singh despite the warnings of Chandrasekhar, who told Cho Ramaswamy, You tell your friend that he is supporting Singh, but he is a very dangerous man. He believes in nothing. But at that time, we had so many cases against us in the Express. So I told Cho, there's a proverb. When your house is on fire, you cannot wait for the Ganga water. Cho said to me, are you sure it's not petrol? That's what it turned out to be. Uh, VP Singh barely lasted a few uh, months in power. As always, his honeymoon with Latyan's Delhi was aborted and slashed. Yet again, Latyan's Delhi had unmade a prime minister by the sheer force of its publishing ink. So, Mr. or Miss Next Prime Minister of India, please listen to Latyan's Delhi. Read their columns and editorials directly yourself. Don't allow aides and intermediaries to send you very sanitized uh, excerpts. Don't uh, flinch at their sharp commentary. Learn from it. Internalize it. Don't become hostile or retributive. Believe me uh, when I say that uh, that shall be the biggest guarantor of your ability to stay in office.